This video is gonna walk individuals through active and passive range of motion assessment of the wrist and hand, along with goniometric assessment. All right, so for assessment of the wrist and hand, uh, I typically like to have the individual in a seated position with the forearm supported, uh, either by a pillow or some other form of bolster. At this point, we want the pillow to be arranged such that the wrist and hand is still free to move. So let's go ahead and begin with just a global assessment of active range of motion. We're going to have the individual go into wrist extension. Good. Into wrist flexion. Good. Come back to a neutral position. We'll have them ulnar and radial deviate. Perfect. Have them make a grip. Open the fingers all the way up. Good. And then while stabilizing the uh, upper arm, go ahead and have them come into a fully pronated position and then fully supinated or palm up position. Excellent. So now that you have a, an idea of the amount of active range of motion that is present, now we can take a formal assessment. For wrist extension, we're going to begin in a palm down position and ask the individual to extend their wrist. We're going to align our goniometer with the ulna. The ulnar styloid process is going to be our axis of rotation. And then we'll line up our mobile arm with the fifth metacarpal. Go ahead and relax. From there, we take our measurement. This individual has 86 degrees of active wrist extension. For wrist flexion, we need to have the individual come into a palm up position. Again, we're gonna stay along the lateral aspect, um, or in this case, medial aspect now of the wrist and hand, and have the individual flex. Again, axis of rotation is the ulnar styloid process. We find the fifth metacarpal and take our measurement. In this case, the individual demonstrates 79 degrees of wrist flexion actively. From here, we're ready to look at ulnar and radial deviation, recognizing that the radius will actually extend just a little bit further distal than the ulna. And so approximately our ratio is a two to one ratio, meaning for every two degrees of ulnar deviation, they should have approximately one degree of radial deviation. So we'll see if that ratio plays out with this measurement. First, we're gonna have the individual radially deviate. So you're gonna stabilize just above the styloid processes and then radial deviation. From there, you're bisecting the radius and the ulna, find your third metacarpal and take your measurement. Go ahead and relax. At this point, the individual has approximately 18 degrees of radial deviation. Conversely, we're ready to move into ulnar deviation. The process is the same. Again, bisect the radius and the ulna right at the wrist joint. Find your third metacarpal and take the measurement. Go ahead and relax. And in this case, the individual demonstrates 35 degrees of ulnar deviation. So almost a two to one ratio as we would expect. Finally, we need to look at pronation and supination. Now for pronation and supination, the individual is going to begin in a neutral position, and I find it helpful to give them a pen to hold on to, which in essence will serve as the guide for your mobile arm during range of motion assessment. Have the individual go into a palm down position, which would be pronation. You're going to envision an imaginary axis of rotation through the axial uh, uh, portion of the forearm. Your uh, stationary arm is going to be directly vertical and your mobile arm will be guiding with the pen. Now, it should be noted that you wanna make sure that they're not abducting the shoulder. Note that if the individual were to abduct the shoulder, they'd be able to get significantly more. So ensure that the shoulder is stationary and at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. We're gonna have the individual go into that pronation again. Perfect. And then line up our mobile arm with the pen. In this case, the patient demonstrates 89 degrees of pronation, which is normal. Then we can have them move into supination, which would be palm up. Our landmarks are the same. And they can relax, this time demonstrating 87 degrees of active supination. Additionally, you can then proceed to passive range of motion. For passive range of motion, you can also provide your overpressures and end feels. We have ulnar deviation. We have radial deviation, which we can switch our handhold for. We have wrist extension. 
We have wrist flexion. Note the wincing uh, that may occur with those overpressures, so you want to make sure that you're watching your patient's face. And then finally, we have pronation and supination. We'll start with supination. And if there are any provocations through the wrist and hand, you may choose to actually do that above by grasping just proximal to the ulnar and radial styloid process while stabilizing the elbow and then coming into pronation. With pronation, you would expect a harder end feel as the radius begins to overlie or crisscross the uh, more inferior ulna. So have a go with active and passive range of motion with and without goniometric assessment as well as your overpressure and end feels with a peer or colleague. And let me know if there's any questions.